So I've had a few people asking me if it was possible to scan yourself without having anyone else there to hold the scanner. Let's give it a shot! I don't have a turntable to stand on, so I created this. Yes, it is just a connect taped to a tripod, but hey, it gets the job done. Let's do some scans. The connect on a stick approach does work. It allowed the scanner to reach most of the features of my face. The major problem is keeping perfectly steady while I move the scanner around. Holding the scanner that far out required some serious torque from my arms, and you can see that even while I'm trying my hardest to keep my head perfectly still, my head still wobbles a bit while I move the scanner around. So here are the results of that scan. Overall, it's not a bad scan. Uh, the back of the neck and the top of the head didn't quite get fully scanned in just because of, it was hard to reach places. But everything else, it turned out pretty well. It got the uh, the front of the head. You can see that because I was my head was moving around while I was moving the scanner, the nose is kind of uh, messed up just because of the nose moving but it's not bad and the bits that were messed up like the top of the head can easily be fixed in mesh mixer or some other program like that so I would say if you want to scan just yourself perfectly possible using the connect on a stick approach but let's try a few more scans and see if we can get something that's a little bit more difficult with that method I have a wizard's hat for Halloween, so I thought I'd give it a try with the Kinect. This was a more difficult scan, as the Kinect couldn't quite reach the top of the hats, and also it was more difficult to move the Kinect without moving my head. So here's me in the wizard hat, and the first thing you notice is that this scan did not come out nearly as clean as the first one did. There are many open holes in the brim of the hats, and then the top of the hat didn't quite fill in. The brim, I'm thinking, is because the connect again couldn't get to all of the angles it needed in order to reconstruct the top and the bottom of the brim, so it had trouble differentiating between them, so it just left an open hole. And then the top is because the tripod that I have the connect taped to, the tripod wasn't quite long enough in order to get the connect far enough away from the top. And I'm also sure that moving around while scanning also didn't help to detect the top of the hat. So if you're going to be trying to scan yourself in very tall hats or very oddly shaped hats, maybe self-scanning's not the best method in order to do this. So I wanted to scan myself wearing a large wig. I was curious to see how the Kinect would handle the fine hair. And I wore this wig to cheer on my college sports teams. So I scanned myself with an open mouth to simulate myself yelling. When I look back at how the scan turned out, I'm not quite sure that that was a good idea. Little did I know that this would be the result. It looks like the Kinect had a really hard time detecting the edges of the fine hairs, and so when it tried to reconstruct the mesh, it just got rid of most of the back of my head. And so it looks like something out of a zombie movie. It looks like I got shot through the mouth, and most of my head was splattered against the wall behind me. I think it's a very interesting look. I don't know if it's useful or would be able to be 3D printed, but hey, it's an interesting effect nonetheless. And finally, I have two more scans. I have myself wearing my Ant-Man helmets, and I also have myself in a Minecraft zombie pigman head. The Ant-Man scan had a few problems with it. First of all, it didn't capture the antennas. You can see that it tried to here, but it didn't reconstruct any of the antennas past that. There's just that little mark on the helmets. Also, it had a really hard time seeing the bottom of the helmet. You can see here that it's missing almost all of it and that's going to take some some pretty heavy work to reconstruct the bottom there another issue is that it had the front of the helmet connect to the face so you can see that this is supposed to be a separate mouthpiece right here but the connect couldn't quite uh, make up that difference and we're missing some of the front of the mouthpiece and overall this scan it's workable 
you can take some time and clean it up and I'll show that in another video but for scanning it and then clicking print uh, again self scans probably not going to do it for more complicated objects as you can see in the back here there's a fault and this is probably due to me moving while the scan is in progress just the slightest uh, change in position could screw up the algorithm that it uses to reconstruct the scan and finally we have the pigman scan I thought this was going to be the easiest one of the bunch because it was just a cardboard box on my head and for the most part I was right the front and the sides came out pretty smooth when you get to the top you see that it had a little bit of trouble detecting exactly where the edges are but overall it did a pretty decent job however when you look at the bottom you see that it didn't quite uh, fill in the inside. It didn't fill in, detect that this bottom was enclosed, and so it rendered all of the inside. That means it's going to take a little bit of time in post-processing to fill in that area because you really want the head to be watertight in order to make this as a 3D printable object. Um, but it's not going to take too long, and overall the scan went pretty well. It even detected the front portion that I cut out of the box so that I can see out of it. It picked that up pretty well. So overall, yes, you can scan yourself. It only requires some specialized hardware, such as taping your Kinect to a long stick, and some patience so that you can stand still while moving the Kinect around. And also, scanning yourself in funny hats, always a good time. I recommend it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. So I have two gifts here for some good friends back home. First I have a 3D printed Bulbasaur figurine printed in glow-in-the-dark green. And so you can do some cool stuff in order to use acetone to smooth out the ridges in your 3D prints. And one way is by doing an acetone vapor bath. Thank you for watching. Hoffman Engineering.